This pagan invasion special hasn't quite convinced me that I shouldn't celebrate Halloween. And even if it does, it's a little too late for that because I already celebrated it last weekend. So I guess that makes it a little pointless for me to continue watching the second half, even though it was also pointless of me to watch the first half. But if you missed out on the first half, here, here's a little taste. While horror films used to be synonymous with B-movies and considered the conventional low-budget industry standby, today they account for nearly 20% of all of the revenue received by feature film producers and distributors. Yeah, because they're cheap to produce and easy to turn in a profit, therefore funding more ambitious projects from the studios. And, uh, what are we talking about now again? All right, the Midwest Pagan Massacre that totally isn't a massacre. Spiritual advisors who live on another plane of consciousness that you can approach, that will acknowledge you and advise you and assist you. Ah, so, like, Siri? Also, I like the subtle, creepy grin they ended it on. Why not put some sinister music and a zoom in while you're at it? It will acknowledge you and advise you and assist you. All this is going to prove is that the pagan invasion consists of the most unthreatening people you will ever come across in your life, who really just want to mind their own business, it looks like. Look, the only scary thing about Sarah, Witch Queen of Germany, is that I think I saw Diane Thorne play this character once. The fact is that witches, as well as Satanists, commemorate Halloween night with the same fervent dedication to invoke spirits for personal power. I'm curious when these people watch stuff like The Exorcist or Brotherhood of Satan, do they think of them as documentaries? And again, it's not so threatening when the footage you're showing is just a few adults playing Ring Around the Rosie in their homes, minding their own fucking business. And isn't this supposed to be about Halloween? About the 1st of October, you go into the stores, you see the costumes, you see the, the mother with her little girl putting the witch's hat on her. and. The little boy getting excited about getting the devil mask and... Yeah, the one costume that drives all the kids insane. The devil mask. It's right up there with Black Lone Ranger. There are people out there who don't just celebrate Halloween with trick-or-treat candy. This is a religious holiday to them. You see people decorating their houses with skeletons and all these symbols of death. Uh-huh. And there's people who nail themselves to crosses on Easter. Do we need to boycott that holiday now? And here we go back to this guy again. I left it pretty vague whether I believe this guy or not in part one because I honestly didn't know if he was telling the truth, and I even waited for confirmation one way or the other. And no joke, the consensus is that the story that this guy tells about belonging to a family that abducts children for human sacrifice is the plot to the movie hack -O lantern I think I may have heard of that one before. What do you think when you see churches and Christians celebrating Halloween? It makes me sick. Hey, did you know that one of the origins to Halloween has to do with kids dressing up like monsters in order to scare away the evil spirits? Just think of it like that, only with candy. The fact is that a highly organized network of Satanists are operating in America and Europe today. Again, how does this affect you? Is your faith so weak that it could be easily shattered by this? They seem to be respectable members of society and are integrated into all professions and walks of life. Almost like they're regular people or something. But don't worry, the second half of this special has... experts. We go now to a special report from noted author Hal Lindsey. Uh, Hal Lindsey? Evangelical author Hal Lindsey? The same Hal Lindsey that said that Obama was paving the way for the Antichrist after he said the same thing about European economics and that the world was supposed to end before the year 2000? What does Hal have to say? We came out to a place in the hills east of Los Angeles to a location that has been identified in the past with ritual worship and we believe Satanism. And there you are trespassing on their property. And you can look at some of the artifacts we found here today, upside down crosses that were put around, bones that uh, are scattered around here. 
Actually, that's my fault. Uh, we we're filming our remake of Manos there. <laughs> Sorry. I wonder if he thinks that there are dinosaurs nearby if he ever finds a T-Rex bone. But also something disturbing in the light of what we'll be talking about in the future. And that is the diaper of a very, very small baby. I think I saw one of those in the trash at the mall. I knew it had something to do with Satanists. Also, can we not talk about the diaper of a small baby that you found? I watched as this accelerated, not just in the West Coast, but around the country. Okay, why? It's not your religion. You think they give a shit about what you think of theirs? We have found all over the country reports that there are animals that have been mutilated. In terms of sacrificing animals, I think there's enough guilt to go around on both sides here, so can we all just agree that sacrificing animals is not a good thing? Unless, apparently, if you're a couple of serial killers who they interviewed. If you do it once, you want to do it all the time. Once, you, once you've actually passed the barrier of sacrificing an animal, you get this sort of bloodlust. Oh, that explains the Amazon cannibal movies. Once one of them killed animals on screen, they just couldn't stop. But it isn't just animals. Halloween is the time when all across the country, in secret little places, in the dark, there will be little babies sacrificed to Satan. Are we still talking about Halloween? You don't believe it? I know it's hard to believe myself. Mm, just coat it with enough butter. I'm sure you can swallow it down. But there has been such an acceleration of worship of Satan that we believe that these sorts of things are happening and we have evidence that they are. We're not going to show you any of it, though. You're just going to have to envision it in your mind's eye. Mentally, you know that they are there. You can see them in your mind's eye. <laughs> see? This lady gets it. I am, of course, not saying that there have been no examples of someone not right in the fucking head doing something truly evil and murderous in the name of Satan or whoever. But what I'm saying is that broad brushing it like this only makes you look like a hypocrite. And maybe get some better sources to talk to. It is appallingly evil. It is about murder. It is about child abuse. It's about sexual abuse. It is no joke and must be taken seriously and must be dealt with. Yeah, way to get David Wilshire, the guy who The Guardian dubbed as Britain's stupidest MP, the guy who didn't seek re-election because of an expenses scandal. This is going to be our go-to guy on Halloween and Satanism? Also, I really don't like this camera angle. Do any of these kids know that you're filming them? Even when this cop is talking about mass deaths involving human sacrifice and abduction, the only thing I can think of is, are these killers still at large? Why am I not hearing more about this? A mother will be asked to sacrifice her own child to Satan, and she may even, in fact, be ritually impregnated. She may be. Not exactly sure. Hell, according to this video, the only Satanists to have ever been captured are Charles Manson and Richard Ramirez. Uh, speaking of, I don't think it matters what I say because the people behind this video are probably looking at me right now and thinking that I look like the bastard son of Charles Manson and Anton LaVey. With Ramirez uh, brazenly flashing the satanic symbol and uh, saying hail Satan and sh holding up his palm with a pentagram in it. And yet Ramirez was convicted of some of the most brutal crimes. So we need to ban Halloween because of this? Do we also need to ban dogs because one of them spoke to David Berkowitz? Do we also need to stop celebrating Christmas because the Yorkshire Ripper killed 13 people because apparently God told him to? No, because those are crazy people. And that really doesn't give any excuse for the fear mongering on display here. The real Satanists, the hardcore Satanists are involved in criminal activity and for that reason they are going to try and look as normal as possible the better to be able to deceive you they're doctors they're lawyers they're teachers basically what we're saying is don't go outside like ever people will sacrifice your pets and do strange things with your baby's diaper and you can tell when they start to run out of people to talk to in a recent letter to syndicated advice columnists and landers go on. A concerned parent wrote of a fourth grade teacher who had asked her students to write a short essay on what they would most like to do to celebrate Halloween. 
Eighty percent of her nine-year-olds expressed the wish to kill somebody. And 99% of them probably believe the Tooth Fairy will be their sidekick. Is this around the time when Ann Landers caused a panic because she said people were going to stick razor blades in your kids' candy? Christians can gather together at Halloween and use the night to educate themselves to the dangers of paganism. So give them the world's shittiest Halloween and lie to them? Well, that's your choice, I guess, as is mine to celebrate Halloween. All of today's seemingly innocent Halloween customs and symbols have their origins in the ancient Celtic Day of the Dead. Really? Because they kind of look like they originated from John Belushi on Saturday Night Live. The practice of trick-or-treat is from Celtic tradition, where people gave food in return for blessings from spirits of the dead. Hey, did you know the Yule Log has its roots in Germanic paganism? So what else are you trying to take away from kids? Jack-o'-lanterns grew out of the Celtic tradition of carving the faces of demonic spirits on turnips and later on pumpkins. Well, common folklore is that it comes from Stingy Jack, who wasn't allowed into hell because of his trickery of the devil, so he lights an ember into a turnip to guide himself through the neither world. That's hardly an evil story written with the blood of Satan himself there. Things evolve. Holidays evolve. It's about kids going out and getting candy. Accept it. Bobbing for apples was part of the Druidic New Year sexual divination ceremony of fertility. Yes, another thing that has pagan origins, just like everything I've already mentioned about Christmas traditions. And like how the origins of the Christmas tree, the Yule Log, and the mistletoe have ceased, so has this one. It's no longer done out of a Pomona representation that foretells marriage within the year. It's about sticking your head in water and getting apples. So it's okay when Christianity helps to turn those things into a wholesome normality, but not when it involves something that has to do with Halloween? Wouldn't it be a good thing to you that these are no longer being done for, in your opinion, evil purposes? By understanding the pagan origins of Halloween, we can no longer claim ignorance. <laughs> That's what you do with the pagan origins of your holidays! And if this couldn't lose me any further... Deuteronomy chapter 18 spells out God's position concerning man's participation in divination, sorcery, or communicating with the dead. There really needs to be a rule that these specials can no longer cite Deuteronomy as a reference because then I can easily do this. Hey guy, do you also believe that if a town worships something other than you, then you are allowed to murder everyone in said town? In fact, I think that's worse than everything you've mentioned in this video. The source of occult power is Satan. It is deceptive, exploitive, and will eventually fail to deliver on its promises. Funny, considering how I grew up watching exploitation movies, and this is one of the most exploitive things I've come across. If you accept the fact that his death and resurrection is payment in full for all of your sins, you will have everlasting life. Damn it, isn't that technically a human sacrifice? That does it for a... Hey, hey, where are you going? The door's right behind you. Why put it there if you're not even going to use it? Don't worry, though. If you want to know more about the Pagan Invasion, there's plenty more videos in this series. The Pagan Invasion is an explosive new 13-part video series. Hey, wait a minute. The number 13 is one of the special numbers in the Gardnerian Wicca. Also, 13 is the age that usually begins with the learning of witchcraft. And there are 13 witches that make up a coven. Plus, 13 is the number of important cycles of fortune and misfortune. Holy shit, the pagans have invaded pagan invasion. I'm just kidding, that's very stupid and close-minded of me. Take the damn hint. And while you're at it, dress up, go trick-or-treating, get some free candy. But don't come to my place, because I'll have the porch light shut out. It's the ancient tradition of, I don't have any candy to give out for Halloween. Which is then followed by the ancient kids' tradition of throwing eggs at my house. God damn it. It's almost time, kids. The clock is ticking. Be in front of your TV sets for the horathon. And remember the big giveaway.